Yo guys, it's time for another film review and this time I'm doing Fallout. So let's start with my initial idea for Fallout, which was to take inspiration from Watchmen and 300 by the director Zack Snyder. I want to do visually stunning films with slow motion, all this crazy visual stuff in every shot. Did I get there? Not quite. The main thing I wanted to do was to make a drama about Fallout with a little bit of action. And I realize now that the action was, was a little bit more action than it was drama. But in my mind, my mindset back then was I want to show the emotion that one would feel if they kill someone for the first time after escaping a vault in this wasteland, this horrible place. How would they cope with that? What I did while writing the script is I watched a whole bunch of Fallout short films all over YouTube and the internet. And what I noticed is that there weren't as many iconic things from Fallout the video game, Fallout 3 in New Vegas, that I had hoped there would be. Like the Super Mutants, I never really saw anything like that. Caesar's Legion, Pip Boy, the vault, showing Vault 101, escaping the vault. Uh, the story of him trying to find his father, Project Purity, all that good stuff. I wanted to have that in there, the Courier from New Vegas. No one had ever really done those stories. They'd done like spin-offs, but not the actual story. The overall plot for this film is very similar to Fall 3 in New Vegas. This guy trying to escape his vault, trying to find his father, and a courier who got shot in the head and he's trying to figure out who shot him and why. The original thing that I threw in there is a bounty hunter named Michael. He's trying to go after the character Dan, me, for some bounty. He's doing it for money because he doesn't have hardly any he has one cap on his neck, and that's about it. A few problems I noticed about the film. The intro is really confusing. If you haven't played the video game beforehand, this movie's gonna just go right over your head. There's a lot of Easter eggs in there that you wouldn't understand if you didn't play the game. The lighting, I noticed, is really poor. Sometimes it's too dark in areas. It's too grainy, dark and grainy. It looks very unprofessional. I mean, back then, I didn't really pay enough attention to lighting, and if we had better lighting, it wasn't so dark, you can actually see the faces and everything, it would be a lot better. There's too much music at times, especially in the intro. The music just kind of like changes. It changes constantly, like from a classic to like dark to intense to emotional in like the first five minutes of the film, which is kind of an issue because too much music changes around like that, it's, it just seems kind of amateurish. Dialogue and acting is not the best. I was less experienced with writing dialogue back then than I am now. I didn't pay attention to how the way people actually talk, the dialect, and everything. The audio is too low at times. Sometimes you can't really understand what someone's saying, especially my character. The audio is also kind of scratchy. I didn't add enough filters to it. Same with the music. Sometimes I record the music straight off my laptop instead of actually downloading it. Not all the flashbacks are set up where it makes sense. Uh, too much montage stuff going on, you know? There's not enough dialogue. There's not enough story. You know, you have all these little scenes going on. It's like fight scene, the uh, narration all these little snippets of stuff, cool things from the game, but I mean, the story is, just, because of that, is kind of absent. There's one scene where, I'm, where I've killed someone for the first time right after go leaving Megaton. It's two raiders, one with a shotgun, the other one with a machete, and the motion of music kicks in, and then I'm falling on the ground, I'm, you know, I'm walking, it's like a whole montage of that with the motion of music playing. I just feel like it's too soon, you know, like, you haven't even really gotten to know my character yet, so you can't really feel anything for me. So when you put the emotional music and scene in there, it's not as impactful as it could be, as, as if I were to put it later on in the film. The flow really needs a lot of work. I've had problems with this in the past so many times. Project Spider-Man, you know, I had a lot of problems with that and the flowing. Uh, it's too fast sometimes. You can't really uh, get into the characters and the story because it's jumping around all the time. Too jumpy. You have to establish certain things first. There's a few good things about this movie. Um, the story is established pretty early on in the first scene right after the montage. Characters are established. Michael establishes himself. He's like, I'm a bounty hunter. And and then I say, oh, oh I'm a vault dweller. Connor comes in. He says, I'm a courier trying to find who shot me in the head. Problems during film. I'm not going to go over them, guys, because it'd just be too boring, probably. So I'm just going to get over the, the biggest problem. One event. The war scene, the nuclear war scene, that was the hardest one to film. We had to film it in two days. And the first day was the hardest because we had to get everyone there in one place at the same time, same day. And If any of you filmmakers out there, you know how stressful that can be. The more actors, the harder it is. The war scene was the hardest because it was filmed during the summer and the grueling heat while we were all wearing long sleeve war suits and everything. It's hard to get people motivated when they're sweating and they're tired and about to die of a heat stroke. One of my actors was just about done. We had to drag him to finish the scene. And the second day, that was probably the hardest one because it was even harder that day. We didn't film in the afternoon. We filmed in the midday, the heat of the summer. War scenes are hardest to film because heat, trying to make it look convincing, trying to make it intense, trying to do explosions without special effects or professional rigged explosions. We can't really do that because we're not pyrotechnicians. We, 
very dangerous. So we just used ashes and dirt and grass. I would actually have my mom and another friend's mom just like throwing bits of grass and dirt for the explosions and add sound effects and it fixes the rest. Other complications during filming, trying to get your actors motivated, trying to get them to show up. A lot of them have jobs. It's a whole nother universe. It's not like it's in modern day. So we'd have, and it's fallout too. We had to hide stuff like trees, and cars, modern cars. And it's really hard doing period pieces. You know, fallout's supposed to be like stuck in time. In the 1960s or 80s, 70s or whatever, I don't know the exact date, I'm probably getting it wrong. My overall score for Fall would probably be a 4. I mean the story's there, three different characters, it jumps around between them, that's kind of unique. The ending scene is pretty intense, it jumps back and forth between each of the things that are going on. My call is an epic death scene, I thought that turned out pretty good. It's the best war scene we've ever done in terms of us alone. The lighting could be better, the story could be better developed, sometimes it gets a little boring. There's too many things going on, too many montages, narration. But let me know how you feel, if there's anything I can improve on. Because you help me get better. So thanks.